So let's get the read on all of this with Baron Senior Editor Jack Howe, former Congresswoman Nan Hayworth, and our own Charlie Gasparino. Um, so you're looking at this, Nan, and you're seeing hints of progress. That's how yeah. the markets are interpreting it. Yeah. Um, they dial back a lot of the nasty rhetoric. That doesn't mean anything. But what do you make of what's going on? Well, I think the market's actually responding. I, I'd call this the Larry Kudlow bounce right now because Larry went on the talk shows yesterday and said, look, uh, you know, the, the president has, is in effect, someone uh, close at hand, namely the person of Larry and some other voices who are saying, we have to be very careful about tariffs, Mr. President. That said, we support you in the very crucial mission of combating Chinese mercantilism. Everybody agrees. And in fact, we do have an international coalition, which is so crucial. Those international relationships are going to make an enormous difference but in the short and the long term. What was different about what he said? Uh, did, did you read anything that optimistic into it outside of the fact, the fact that he is going to avoid any way he can? That is the president of the administration of trade war. It's just part of the same pattern. Tough talk, backpedaling, tough talk, backpedaling. We know the president likes to watch TV. I think he's starting to get the feedback cycle that happens with the stock market. And then he comes with, it with a soft talk. Look, get me to Friday. You refer to the stock market today. Get, get, What's going on? Get me to Friday because Friday starts earnings reporting season. We're going to have the best earnings growth since probably 2011. Investors are going to have something to focus on other than this And that's a talk. pretty good backdrop. We should stress that we get this quarterly report card time. The banks, financial institutions, the end of the week. And they're going to be closely scrutinized. And the backdrop there, to Jack's point, as you know, is very positive. We could see 16 to 18 percent earnings growth right. a year over year. That's not too shabby. And that's... And that's based on Trump's policies. I mean, you got you have to give the president credit for cutting reg- regulation uh, and the tax cuts, which has both have massive bottom line impacts. I don't you care. Should stress. I'm glad you yes. mentioned that. This would be the quarter, the first quarter, which yeah. those tax cuts took effect. Right. Go ahead. And it, and that will go that that will go right to the bottom line of these companies. And by the way, la- deregulation is hard to measure. But I could tell you that when I talk to CEOs and I talk to a lot of them, they say that's one of the biggest drivers of earnings. They they, they have, if they have less government on their back. They have more but bottom would that line growth. Any of the now, here's concerns? the one thing I will tell yeah. you this, that when when was Republicans <clears throat> and Democrats, when they worried about the Trump, uh, Donald Trump becoming president pre the election, they believed that his trade policies, if mm-hmm. if they were if they were matched with action, would destroy the stock market and hurt the economy. And, and that's what you're seeing in the markets right now. The one thing I will say this, um, a lot of investors believe that his bark is bigger than his bite, and they look at uh, Kudlow as, you know, a lot of investors just don't trust Trump. Trump, They think this is all bluster and Steve Bannon rhetoric to solidify his base. The other thing is that when he starts talking about trade, uh, NAFTA being a horrible deal, um, and all these other trade agreements being horrible, hurting the economy, the facts don't sit, the facts well, well, let's, dis- let's, let's dis- dis- disregard that. that. I do like what you're saying here, but I, uh, Nan, one of the things that he has hinted at, the president has hinted at, is that he might, just now in these remarks, <clears throat> uh, have a finished, you know, NAFTA updated version. Right. Uh, and there's been a great deal of hope that maybe his bark is a lot worse than his bite, but he does get some concessions out of the Chinese, nevertheless, as he got out of the South Koreans. People can poo-poo and those concessions. And he's meeting with North Korea. And he's meeting with North Korea. Do you think that will, will win out here? Um, and that if, if it's deemed that the Chinese haven't done enough, that it will boomerang on him? Uh- I I agree with Charles that I think his strongest uh, tool, basically, is that he has created, and Jack just said it, a robust, a much more robust domestic economy. That gives him a lot of leverage domestically, and that also gives him leverage. Doesn't give him leverage with the Chinese, you know. Well, but I think it does. The stronger our economy is, the stronger we can build partnerships with the rest of the world, right? No, seriously. Then does China really care about that? Well, no, I think, well, look, China's economic Greg Epp had a great uh, blog last week in Wall Street Journal. He said China's economic pain points are actually much bigger than ours. So that's the argument that China needs to get something because it needs a deal more than we do. Do you agree with that, Jack? No, China has done a tremendous and growing business with emerging economies. They're, they are not as dependent on us as we like to believe. Mm-hmm. I'll well, just they say- like our soybeans, <laughs> right? They yes. do need our soybeans. They, yeah, they do. They'll, they'll get it from somewhere else if they have to. Brazil is running out of capacity. Right now, we're it. So, so let, let, no I'm sorry, else, Jack, I do want to follow on that, Jack. Do you, where do you see <laughs> yeah. this going? A lot of attention to Xi Jinping tonight, what he makes overnight, this speech that was on the, uh, you know, on the calendar for a long time, but that he might use this as the opportunity to hint of a deal, uh, or at least 
concessions to the administration? I think both sides are going to try to find a way to avoid a trade war. But, I mean, do a mental exercise and picture the Chinese saying, picture them coming out and saying, you know what? You talked us into it. We realize now the error of our ways, stealing your intellectual capital all those years. And boy, we feel ashamed of ourselves. We're going to we're going to change things. We're going to give it all back. I mean, I, 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 I mean, so you I, don't see that happening. No, but I'm hoping that they can come to some kind of agreement gonna, to avoid a, tr- a trade war. But my, my yeah. no one is, wins. They, I agree. My I guess agree. is they, and this is what I think. Larry Kudlow, if he has his sort of ways, going to what's going to happen? My guess is they're going to give something marginal. And Donald Trump is going to declare victory. And but what's what, what the intellectual dishonesty of what Trump says about trade is really what gets me. And it, it, what I find interesting is that Larry Kudlow would work for a guy who basically said that everything Larry Kudlow said over the years is wrong. But I mean, I, listen, but what Larry guy, Kudlow is saying, if this is a means right. to an end without ever exa- no, no, but, ex- ex- putting the tariffs in effect. Right, it's, no, it's, no, not that, man. What he just said on the air, what he I just know. said before was that free trade, we got screwed on free trade. Right. We got screwed on all these agreements. We didn't get any jobs out of it. It's been an economic negative for but us. But he was the one who was banned. Uh, he, he abandoned but, the Trans-Pacific deal that would have been a... a, a, a a counter to oh, that's another all thing. That, all that negative talk was just before he cheered about how high the stock market is and right, how great right. the economy is. Look, this might be unpopular here, but I regard this as year one of the Trump economy. That's I know we had a rip-roaring stock market last year. That was an Obama budget. It was Obama trade deals. It was an Obama tax plan. So now we've got well, a no, new Trump policy. lower taxes. Uh, yeah. Lower taxes, right. effective well, this and year. And he lowered regulations right away. And he says the stock market is a great report card. I'm watching the stock market. All right, market. so let me ask you this, guys. It's not, it's not we, the only report card. We don't have any time my producers are screaming at me. Cause they, right. And they scream extra loud because they think I'm so old that I That's can't hear you. That's why I pop the thing out. I can hear you. They think they're President Trump I know, I know, I know. I'm wondering if whatever concessions the Chinese make, they'll do something, to your point, uh, will be enough to satisfy the markets. What do you think? Yes. Oh, yeah. Earnings are going to dwarf anything that's going on now over the next year. But will he are- look like Superman if they get some concessions out of Beijing? Oh, yeah. yeah, he'll cheer about it. We'll get no, I maybe, know he'll cheer about it. We'll, we'll get you, maybe 20% and the, and the earnings growth. Talk to. We'll get maybe 20% Markets earnings growth going forward. I know forward. we're going to get 20% well, earnings growth. What matters beyond out. that? You it, don't think this would, would, would grease the skids for a further run-up in the market? Yeah, what matters beyond that is whether the cuts have a stimulative effect. Even with the mercantilists in the markets, Because you know what the markets are saying? If you get in a cake tr- trade war, Absolutely. that's stupid. Don't business do it. is business. Business is international. Capital flows. And we want to be the most welcome Jack destination for capital the in the world. Jack doesn't believe the tax cuts are, gonna, are really working. No, I think I, I, I think the evidence isn't there yet. We have to see. By the way, whatever, Great growth this year. Let's see right. what whatever next year's estimates things, look President like Obama late this year. President Obama did prior to the Trump election were thanks to the Republican Congresses of the six preceding years. Just saying. Having been there. You notice that Jack just doesn't say anything. He's just he's appalled by that. Respectfully, right? Jack. Just, I'm happy with the tax cuts, but it's all on borrowed money. We got monster deficits to come after this, so I want to see that stimulative effect. I'm if eager for it. We don't get three and a half percent growth. Deficit blows right. out. Interest rates go up. Right. Right. You might be right. We need growth. All right, but we, that's are, what we are at <laughs> session highs, by the way, up about 370 points. And a lot of this, uh, more to do with China. You know the drill here, and we've been saying this often enough. I said it over the weekend, and we'll continue. Uh, the, the better it looks that we get a trade deal with China, uh, even though it might be a murky one, the better it looks for stocks. The worse that looks, the worse it looks for stocks. That has been leading this market. Now, to Jack's point and these other fine guests' point, earnings could change that come later on in the days and weeks ahead. For now, it's China. Stupid.